Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it gives me great pleasure to be uh, hosting this um, event. And uh, we're here to discuss very important uh, themes, defending democracy in challenging times. I'm reminded of the famous quotation by Lenin, there are decades when nothing happens and there are weeks when decades happen. And we seem to be living uh, through such an experience now where uh, many different uh, crises and consequences which we can only at this stage uh, speculate on. It is a great honor to be uh, having a conversation with Jorgos Papandreou about this uh, agenda. He, of course, brings so much experience to these uh, topics, both domestic and international. And I would like you to be very interested to hear uh, his comments and his insights in this respect. Uh, George, perhaps the way to start would be to uh, have your sense of the different crises that we're living through, their magnitude, their significance. People, talk, people use the phrase in the social sciences, a polycrisis, to suggest that we have a mix of crises. Clearly some may be short term, but some are longer term. Some are potentially of much deeper consequence. How would you make sense of the current situation in terms of the potential impact that we're facing from different crises? Thank you, Kevin, and uh, let me just begin by uh, welcoming you to Greece. Uh, many times you've been here and we worked together in difficult times also when I was Indeed. Prime Minister, but I see many friends, Michael Muller, Amr Musa, Jeffrey Sachs, many others are here. Welcome to, uh, to Greece and to this forum. Uh, going to the crisis in democracy, I think, is, is, is what I am working with a lot now in the Council of Europe, and I'm head of this, of, of this um, commission I was elected to, to work on. What are these crises? How, are they, uh, how is the backsliding of democracy, and uh, why, and, and what are the new innovations or new ideas to really strengthen our democratic institutions? But democracy, one of the reasons that it was invented in the ancient times was to control, check the abuse of power. Uh, and build on the rule of law. And uh, we are seeing that the, we are, oh, sorry. We are, we are, we are seeing a, a blatant, of course, abuse of power by, uh, by Vladimir Putin uh, with the invasion in Ukraine against a country that, with all its difficulties, uh, was democratic, is democratic, and um, of course, with the consequences, terrible consequences of war crimes, Bucha, we saw horror and, uh, and the, and the, the consequences around the world, the energy crisis and, of course, the um, food supply crisis, which I think will create new problems, um, possibly huge refugee movements from, from Africa and other parts of the world. But these are not the only um, abuses of power, I would say, that we are seeing in our world. We have been uh, living in a globalized capitalist system which was somewhat unbridled and unregulated. And I think this is one of the big issues that I would like to highlight is the uh, capitalism has created great wealth, but also great inequalities around the world, um, huge inequalities. It has created great wealth, but also has damaged our environment amazingly. Um, it has created um, great wealth, but also it, with a profit motive uh, and not a motive to invest in human beings. We are seeing areas in the world where there are pockets of huge poverty and then, of course, migration and refugees. Um, it has created great wealth and, and, and through that, however, also a concentration of power, uh, whether it's digital, whether it is the pharma industries, whether the agribusiness, the energy, of course, oil and gas, um, the um, finance, and uh, military industries, all these, all these um, have huge, huge power and they have been able to influence our in democratic institutions and decision making either through legal lobbying or through illegal corruption. And we've seen corruption not only in these um, author authoritarian states, but very much so even in our, our robust, supposedly, democracy. So we really have to rethink that. And now, of course, there is the issue of technology, too, and we yeah. can talk about that also. You've raised a number of points, but I'm very interested to hear more about uh, your Council of Europe uh, Commission, which is looking into the challenges to democracy. 
this seems to uh, be agenda setting. The idea is to change the narrative, change our intellectual understanding of what the challenges are. Could you tell us more about that? It is, it is uh, the, the whole idea in the Council of Europe, the Council of Europe, for those who may not know, is 47 countries in the European, in the European sphere, the wider Europe, uh, where we are, as an organization that was created before the European Union, its high court is the uh, court of human, European Court of Human Rights, where our citizens can, can refer to if they have not, uh, not uh, uh, adequately been, um, been given justice in their own nations. And uh, of course, it's working for three issues, democracy, rule of law, and human rights. Uh, we just uh, expelled Russia, so we're 46 now. The last country that was expelled was Greece. And uh, when I was a young yes. resistance uh, fighter with, uh, in, in exile, which so, we, we fought for then. What's the agenda for the commission? The agenda for the commission is to look at all these new challenges. Uh, the, the theme this year in the, in the council is the backsliding of democracy. So what is it that is, is undermining our democracies? Uh, and, uh, and what are the new ways we can, we can deal with? How can we strengthen our institutions? How can we, how can we find also new forms of, of, of democratic participation, such as citizens' councils? Going back to the ancient Greeks, this has also been experimented in, let's say, with the European Union now, as the future of Europe has citizen councils. Ireland very successfully had a citizens' council before the referendum on the issue of abortion, but other countries too. I experimented with this in Greece. The uh, issue of an e-agora, so we have the agora, but also looking at going back a bit to the basics of, of democracy and see how they are affected. For example, we have social media. So in ancient Greece, you had this concept of isigoria. Isigoria means everybody has an equal voice. And um, well, if you look at the social media now, one hoped at one point this was sort of a dream of democracy, of the internet, that everybody had an equal voice. But actually today we don't have an equal voice. You have these bots that multiply voices yeah. millions of times, and you think it's millions of people, and it's not. But you also see the concentration of power in there, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the social media, where either it could be private actors or state actors controlling or influencing. You see the, um, the fact that if you go back to the Pnyx or the Agora in ancient Greece, everybody had to debate with each other. Two different sides, many different sides. They had to be in the same place. Okay, ancient Greece had its, had its negatives too. No women, no, you know, they were slaves and so on. But as a principle, the citizens had to debate with each other. Today, we don't have to do that. We can just build our little armies, you know, our bubbles are cocooning in our, in, our, in our social media and not debate with the other side, but then find, find finally, Polarize, and this, the algorithms play a role with this in, in polarizing, and of course we have the exploitation of our, of our data. As some people have said, data is the new oil. We are giving money to, to these big digital companies. Why not? Why not? Why shouldn't we self-manage maybe our own data? As what yeah. Europe is hopefully trying to do. So these are some of these these issues, which I think which absolutely are, fascinating. One of the challenges to democracy seems to be. Um, renewing citizen engagement. How can individual citizens, how can individual citizens uh, become engaged in politics when traditional forms of political activity seem to be less uh, attractive to young uh, people? Uh, do you see a role here for citizens' councils on many different issues? And are we looking to a politics? actually where traditional structures, political parties, either have to adapt significantly or die? Well, I think we have to look at it at different levels. And uh, one of the problems, one is the international or the global level or the regional level, let's say, let's say in Europe and then the local or national level. Uh, at the global level, I would see that we, we need some form of regulation in order to deal with these deeper inequalities. Going back again to, the, to Aristotle, uh, to the ancients, uh, he was talking about the need to have a strong middle class, basically to have a, a sense of justice and equality in our societies. And of course, both him, he and, and Plato just looked at all the stasis or the revolts in different cities, and they saw, they, they analyzed that if you had deep inequalities, you then moved towards demagoguery, mm. and demagoguery possibly to mob rule, and from mob rule to tyranny. And we are seeing 
that you know if there is a sense of frustration, a sense of of people feeling injustice in our societies through, because of these inequalities, they will be looking for not trusting the system and not maybe trusting their neighbors and maybe putting their trust in some demagogue or some savior. And I think this is one of our one of our one of our issues we have to deal with. So we need to really. And I think this is where Europe can play a role, is look at how we humanize through regulation this global capitalism, um, or at least do it in our region. And secondly, I think that, that we need at the, at, to have the will to entrust our citizens with, with ever difficulties. I mean, you did that in the UK, and maybe we didn't like the result of Brexit, but in the end, I think we need to find ways to make uh, allow for... Uh, citizens' participation much more directly and much more constantly. Uh, our, our parties have been uh, sometimes over-bureaucratized. Um, citizens feel some, somewhat powerless in these very complex systems that are too big to fail, they were saying, these banks, but actually too big to be controlled. So they feel a sense of taking back control, which was this, the slogan yes. of the Brexiteers. But that is not the way to take back control through isolation, as it is actually through regulation and through more democratic processes. And do you think Europe could agree on the regulation for the new social media? Uh, to put it in context, we're in a world in which uh, there may be uh, attacks on democracy uh, through IT systems. Uh, we accuse Russia of interfering with democratic processes in the West, etc. But we also have... Uh, multinational comp uh, companies, which are huge. Well, Canada. it was Facebook that sold uh, sold all this data to to Trump support to Trump uh, yeah. organizations so, or whatever was it uh, the o Oxford Analytica, and that, that obviously influenced uh, the so, U.S. elections in one way or another. So, can we expect uh, effective regulation? I think we uh, need to look. On that? I think we need to look for effective regulation, not to undermine free speech, but to make sure that it is truly free and equal speech, as I said earlier, mm. uh, and, and knowing, knowing where it comes from, I think we also need to, to think about um, uh, our own Facebooks that may be linked with parliaments. That would be like an e-agora where everybody could actually deliberate. We tried this. Uh, we tried When I was prime minister, we did what we called a, a wiki, uh, sort of wiki laws, like from Wikipedia, where we put all our laws before they went to parliament on... The, yes. on the, the, the internet, we asked citizens to, to comment, then they had to come back to the, uh, to the cabinet of ministers to discuss the proposals by our citizens, and then went to the parliament. Now, that was experimental, but we maybe need to think of a, of a true uh, e-agora where citizens have daily opinions on what is being legislated, what is being decided. But also regulate all these big companies that, that make laws through our applications, we are basically in these in these little phones. They are telling us how to behave, what pre prerequisites for one thing or another, you know, whether you can yeah. get a loan or not. They are making legislation, and it's not being legislated. But I would also say, you know, since data, since we are the we are the data, why not self-manage our data? Why not have some form of? Why don't we become uh, stockholders in, or why don't we automatically become stockholders in? Or shareholders in Facebook, a rather, or in of, these Facebooks, rather than a different you know, kind of uh, a different relationship. Kind of approach, yeah. I wonder if we come absolutely to the present and uh, think of the Putin effects on democracy, the Putin effects on Europe. Uh, it seems to be a reminder of what Europe stands for, and it may somehow be bringing Europe closer together to realise what it is we're against. But I'm tempted to. Uh, make the comment that tomorrow President Zelensky will be addressing the Greek Parliament. That's true. Not all, I will not, be there. Not all Greek members of Parliament will be present, as I understand it. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, we will see. Okay. Uh, but the point would be... Uh, That's their democratic it, right. But it's, it's also my democratic right to criticize that. Absolutely. If that happens. Absolutely. But before we can tackle the challenges to democracy, we have to understand... We have to agree what those challenges are. And I wonder, uh, ambiv ambivalence for some in Greece as to Putin's strategy in Ukraine, how much of a problem is this for a common sense of what Europe stands for? 
Yeah, we, well, first of all, I think there is, it is a crossroads for Europe. I think that Europe, of course, has shown um, great unity uh, for, for one maybe unexpected, and, so, and not simply because of the particular war with Ukraine. It's not just a Ukraine-Russian problem, but as you said, it's a question of, of values. Uh, are we moving towards a, um, a, a situation where we have the rule of the powerful, or rule of law, power of law. And I think this is the, the, one of the major, major issues uh, that we're facing. And Europe is based on the rule of law. Uh, our Council of Europe, of course, where I am, of course, is based on the rule of law. We, we can change our laws, but it's based on the rule of law and, and democratic, democratic creation of laws. If we, if we abandon that, or if that is undermined, we will go into a situation of the rule of the powerful, and then, of course, it will be a different type of a world. And if you think about this different type of a world with nuclear weapons and other types of weapons of mass destruction, we are, we are, doom, we are, we are creating a, a real doomsday and an apocalypse. Uh, and I don't want to be a doomsayer, but, um, but we're, we, we're, we have to talk about it you know, already by, by people like Putin. And presumably, so so whether, whether, it's, whether it's a bluff or not, no one really knows, but still. Um, so I think, yes, and so Europe has been quite strong. I also would like to see a post-Putin time when we look more at a, at a, at a collective security in, in Europe. Uh, because we need to see how we get together. We're not against the Russian people. And we would like, I would like to see Russia integrated into a system where we can work together. China too, obviously, but now we're... We're, we, we need to see it in that way. And, and I, would, I would also like to see that because of this war, we don't say, okay, they're the bad guys, we're the good guys. Yes, Putin is the bad guy. But we have to make our democracies more robust too. So it's not just that everything is well and we just need a new defense system in, in Europe, which Greece has always been in favor of, yep. um, and therefore militarization being the solution. No. Deepening our democratic institutions, building and strengthening our values, that is a real defense. And, and of course, that has to do with, with, with social equity, it has to do with sustainability and climate change, it has to do with an energy system which makes us more autonomous, it has to do with rethinking globalization. One other, one other aspect of globalization, I think more and more, as we are interdependent, we are realizing that interdependence can be good if you share values. But if you don't share values, interdependence can be used geopolitically to undermine, to blackmail, to, to, to be used in different, reason, different ways. So in some way, we will be seeing more, I, I would think, a tendency towards greater autonomy in energy, in food supplies, in health supplies. And maybe areas of globalization will be our commonwealth of knowledge and technology, our commonwealth of being the stewards of, of our environment, uh, which is common commonwealth so i think these are the these are the new challenges we have but europe is at a crossroads and and it's not just us versus you know this bad guy putin it is also how we in europe deal with this these challenges and when you when there is a sense of mistrust in a system as i said earlier people often look to saviors mm. and that would be destructive in my mind so and we see that in, in Europe. I mean, we saw Orban re-elected. They build on mistrust. The more you mistrust the person next to you, the more you're looking for some authority to, to protect you. So the more we build trust, and that means building types of, inf of dem democratic processes where people feel that they participate, they, they are informed, uh, they have a voice, and they can trust a system. Is and it I think this is what, what is our challenge. Does it also mean that the European Union, presumably the agenda that you have for the Commission with the Council of Europe, is also in questions of how member states respect the rule of law? Absolutely. And of course, one of the challenges for the European Union is in respect of Poland, and uh, we're running out of time, I, I apologize, but we've got to call... Well, maybe to, they are running out of time, hopefully. Okay. The ones that are not respecting the rule you're looking of law. At the rule, <laughs> you're looking at the rule of law, uh, and the European Union has to do more. Uh, and the Council of Europe, too. Yes, right. absolutely. Okay. I apologize. The clock 
has uh, caught us out, but uh, it's been a great pleasure. We've My covered pleasure. so much. Uh, we needed twice the time. It wasn't, it wasn't allocated, but uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you.